Hey guys, thanks for coming back. So we are going to read chapters three and four today of Junie B. Jones and the Stupid Smelly Bus. So chapter three, the stupid smelly bus. The bus wasn't like my daddy's car at all. It was very big inside and the seats didn't have any cloth on them. The little curly girl was sitting near the front and so I tapped on her. Guess what, I said. Mother said for me to sit here. No, she said. I'm saving the seat for my best friend, Mary Ruth Marble. Then she put her little white purse on the place where I was going to sit. And so I made a face at her. Hurry up and find a seat, young lady, said Mr. Wu. And so I quick sat down across from the curly, mean girl. And Mr. Wu shut the door. It wasn't a regular kind of door, though. It folded in half, and it was closed. It made a wishy sound. I don't like that kind of door. If it closes on you by accident, it will cut you in half, and you will make a squishy sound. The bus made a big roar, and then a big puff of black, smelly smoke came out of the back end of it. It's called bus breath, I think. Mr. Wu drove for a while. Then the brakes made that loud, screechy noise again. I covered my ears so I couldn't get so it couldn't get inside of my head. Because if loud screechy noises get inside your head, you have to take aspirin. I saw that on a TV commercial. Then the bus door opened again, and a dad and a boy with a grouchy face got on. The dad smiled. Then he plopped the grouchy boy right next to me. This is Jim, he said. I'm afraid Jim isn't too happy this afternoon. The dad kissed the boy goodbye, but the boy wiped it off his cheek. Jim had a backpack on. It was blue. I love backpacks. I wish I had one of my very own. One time I found a red one in a trash can, but it had a little bit of gushy on it and mother said no. Jim's backpack had a lot of zippers. I touched each one of them. One, two, three, four, I counted. Then I unzipped one. Hey, don't, yelled Jim. He zipped it right up again, and then he moved to the seat in front of me. I hate that, Jim. After that, the bus kept stopping and starting, and lots of kids kept getting on. Loud kids. And some of them were the kind who looked like meanies. Then the bus began getting very noisy and hot inside, and the sun kept shining down on me in my fuzzy hot sweater. And here's another hot thing. I couldn't roll down my window because it didn't have a handle. And so I just kept on getting hotter and hotter. And it smelled in the bus too. The bus smelled like egg salad sandwich. I want to get off of here, I said right out loud. But nobody heard me. I hated in this stupid smelly bus. And then my eyes got a little bit wet. I wasn't crying though, because I'm not a baby, that's why. After that, my nose started running. Only the bus didn't have a glove compartment, which is where you keep the travel tissues, of course. So I had to wipe my nose on my fuzzy pink sweater sleeve. Then I stayed on the bus for about an hour or three until finally I saw a flagpole in a playground. That meant we were at kindergarten. Then Mr. Wu drove the bus into the parking lot and stopped. I jumped up very fast because all I wanted to do was get off of that stupid smelly bus. Only guess what? That Jim pushed right in front of me. And the curly mean girl did too. And then people started squishing me real tight. And so I pushed them away. And they pushed me right back. That's when I fell down and a big foot stepped on my skirt that looked like velvet. Stop it, I yelled. Then Mr. Wu hollered, hey, hey, hey. And he picked me up and helped me up off the bus. Mrs. was waiting for me just like my mother said. Hi, I'm glad to see you, she called. And then I ran over to her and I showed her the big footprint on my skirt that looks like velvet. Yeah, only look what happened. I got stepped on and so now I'm soiled. Here's a picture of Junie B trying to get off the bus and everybody shoving her. Mrs. brushed it. Don't worry, Junie, she said. It'll come off. After that, I just folded my arms and made a frown, because guess what? She forgot my B again. Chapter 4, Me and Lucille and Some Other Kids. So the other bus kids turned out to be in my class, too. 
One of them was that gym. That gym I hate. Mrs. made us line up, and then we followed her to our room. Its room is room nine. There were other kids waiting by the door. When Mrs. unlocked it, everyone squeezed in all at once. Then Jim stepped on my new shoe. He made a scratch mark on my shiny toe. The kind of scratch that licking won't fix. Hey, watch it, you dumb Jim, I hollered at him. Mrs. bent down next to me. Let's try to use our quiet voice while we're in school, she said. I nodded nicely. I hate that Jim, I said in my quiet voice. After that, Mrs. clapped her hands together very loud. I want everyone to find a chair and sit down as fast as you can, she said. That's when I ran to the table with the red chair. Only guess what? There was already someone sitting there. A girl with little red fingernails. And so I tapped on her and said, I would like to sit there, I think. No, she said, I am. Yeah, only I already picked that chair out, I told her. Ask my mother if you don't believe me. But the girl just shook her head no. And then Mrs. clapped her loud hands again and said, please find a seat. And so then I had to quick sit down in a stupid yellow chair, the same stupid color as the stupid yellow bus. After that, Mrs. walked to a big closet in the back of the room. It's called the supply closet. She got out boxes of new pointy crayons and some white circles. Then she passed them out and we had to print our names on the circles and pin them to our fronts. It was our first work. If you need help spelling your name, raise your hand, said Mrs. I raised my hand. I don't need help, I told her. Grandma Miller says I print beautifully. I used red, but then a mistake happened. I made my Junie too big, and there wasn't any room left for my B, and so I had to squish it very tiny at the bottom. I hate this stupid dumb circle, I hollered. Mrs. made the shh sound and gave me a new one. Thank you, I said nicely. Grandma Miller says I print beautifully. The girl with the little red fingernails was faster than me. She showed me her circle and pointed to her letters. L-U-C-I-L-L-E. -L -L -E. That spells Lucille, she said. I like the name of Lucille, I said, because guess why? Seals are my favorite animals, that's why. The missus passed out drawing paper and we drew pictures of our family. Mrs. put a happy face sticker on mine. It was very good. Except I made my father too teeny and mother's hair looked like sticks. After that, Mrs. took her class on a walk around the school. Everyone had to find a buddy to walk with. My buddy was Lucille. We held hands. The boy I can beat up was right in front of me. His buddy was that gym. That gym I hate. The first place we walked to is called the Media Center. My mother calls it a library. It's where the books are. And guess what? Books are my favorite thing in the whole world. Hey, there's a jillion of them in here, I hollered, feeling excited. I think I love this place. The librarian bit down next to me. She said to use my quiet voice. Yeah, only guess what? Right now, I just like the kind of books with pictures. But mother says when I get big, I'm going to like the kind with just words and also stewed tomatoes. The boy I can beat up said, shh, I made a fist at him. Then he turned around. After that, we went to the cafeteria. The cafeteria is where kids eat lunch, except not when you're in kindergarten. Um, I said, it smells yummy in here, just like Pisketti and meatballs. Then that Jim turned around and held his nose. P.U. I smell you, he said. Lucille laughed very hard, and so I stopped holding her hand. The next place we went to was the nurse's office. It's very cute in that place. There are two little beds where you get to lie down and two little blankets that are the color of plaid. One nurse doesn't look like a nurse. She doesn't wear white clothes and white shoes. Our nurse is just a regular color. Lucille raised her hand. My brother said that last year he came here and you let him take off his shoes and he got a drink of water in just his socks. That Jim turned around again. P.U. I smell your feet, he said to Lucille. This time Lucille stuck her tongue out at him. After that, we held hands again. All right, guys. So tune in tomorrow, okay? And we're going to read chapters five and six, all right? I'll see you guys soon. Bye.